Hello, how's everyone? I sincerely hope you're all doing well and staying safe. Today, we're going to discuss another lesson on Module 2, which is Results European Escapades and Association with the Propaganda Movement. I'm sure all of us are itching to go to places or travel when this pandemic ends, right? Or just when the situation hopefully gets better. Can you cite at least five places that's from your travel bucket list and state a brief reason for each of the places you intend to visit? You may comment down your answers. Alright, let's start with the first tour of Europe. Just like any of us have a travel bucket list, Dr. Rizal has also wanted to travel and has his own reasons. Let's try to find out. On May 3, 1882, Rizal left the Philippines for Spain to continue his medical studies. He arrived in Barcelona on June 16, 1882. After a few months of stay in Barcelona, he transferred to Madrid, the Spanish capital. In Europe, he enrolled at the Universidad Central de Madrid and took up two courses, Medicine and Philosophy and Letters. While pursuing his studies at the University in Madrid, Rizal was involved in a student demonstration. While in Spain, our hero joined the Masonry. Rizal had enlisted in the organization for the possible help the Masons could extend to him particularly by providing a protective shield in his fight against the tyranny and exploitation of the Spaniard. Though he embraced the Masonic philosophy, Rizal did not break his faith in God. In 1883, Rizal received a diploma given by an association of medical practitioners in Madrid for his superb knowledge in medical science. On June 21, 1884, he was awarded the licentiate in medicine, but the diploma of Doctor of Medicine was not conferred on him. Having a licentiate in medicine, Rizal was allowed to practice the medical profession. However, he could not use the title medical doctor and ineligible to teach medical course. In the year 1884, Rizal made his first public address by delivering a speech in honor of Juan Luna and Felix Hidalgo for their triumphs in an international art exhibit held in Madrid. On March 1887, the Nolimitangere was published through the financial assistance of Dr. Maximo Viola. Viola lent Rizal 300 pesos to defray for the printing of 2,000 copies. On May 17, Rizal began his tour of Europe with Viola. From Lake Miritz, the two tourists went to Prague. The two tourists parted at the Swiss border. Before finally going back to the Philippines, Rizal went to Italy and visited Turin, Milan, Florence, and Rome. On to the second tour of Europe. On August 6, 1887, Rizal was back in his motherland. He only had a short homecoming which lasted only for six months because of the ensuing crisis in Calamba. To ease the anxiety of his family and friends, Rizal left the Philippines on February 3, 1888. Rizal arrived in Japan on February 28, 1888. On April 28 of the same year, Rizal saw America for the first time. He was impressed with the wealth and beauty of the place. Our hero had a good impression of America, but sad to say he did not like the Americans. Rizal had an unpleasant experience with the American immigration system. He complained about the excessively strict customs and immigration procedure in California. Rizal regarded this measure as embarrassing and discriminating. After passing through the United States, Rizal proceeded to London. In May of 1888, Rizal began annotating Antonio de Morga's book entitled Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas. Our hero spent most of his time at the British Library to work on his annotation. For a while, Rizal went to Paris to look for more historical documents in the Bibliothèque Nationale. Rizal's purpose was to inspire awareness among the Filipinos of the impressive history of our country. The annotated book was published in Paris in 1890. The Filipino compatriots organized the Asociación de Solidaridad in Barcelona on December 31, 1888. Rizal became part of the propaganda movement which called for the assimilation of the Philippines. He was unanimously chosen as the honorary president of the said association. On January 12, 1889, the Asociación Hispano-Filipina was organized in Madrid 
to work for reforms. The primary organizer was Professor Miguel Moraita, who was consequently elected as president. Not all Spaniards were regarded as adversaries. Some of them were avid sympathizers of the Filipinos. On February 15, 1889, La Solidaridad was born in Barcelona with Graciano Lopez Jaina as its editor. The La Solidaridad served as the paper used by the reformists in expressing their political ideas and the views about the Philippines. In the middle of March 1889, Rizal moved to Paris to continue his research work and began writing for La Solidaridad. During his stay in Paris, Rizal published three installments of his essay, The Philippines Within a Century. That year, Rizal received unpleasant news from the Philippines. He learned that Governor General Terrero ordered the prohibition of the Nole Mitangere. He was also informed that the Calamba tenants and of those who took part in the public demonstration headed by Doroteo Cortes were persecuted. Furthermore, Rizal was told about the eviction of his parents. Rizal called for the Filipinos to stand against the abuse and injustice committed by the Spaniards. He inexhaustibly wrote more articles for La Solidaridad and courageously campaigned for reforms. The Filipino compatriots accorded Rizal support, yet their efforts proved to be useless. In 1890, Rizal published the fourth installment of the Philippines Within a Century. He also published another essay, The Indolence of the Filipinos. In this article, Rizal argued against the claim of the Spaniards that Filipinos by nature are lazy. According to him, Filipinos are industrious people but lost their appetite to work because of the maltreatment and usurpation of the Spaniards. In 1891, a political disagreement between Rizal and Marcelo H. del Pilar caused our hero to withdraw from the organization. He then went to Paris before leaving for Hong Kong. Rizal arrived in Hong Kong on November 20, 1891. While in Hong Kong, Rizal practiced his medical profession. Some members of his family who escaped from the Philippines came to Hong Kong reunited with their family. In Hong Kong, Rizal operated on his mother's eyes for the second time. Through Jose Basa, Rizal became acquainted with some well-known professionals in the place. Aside from practicing medicine, he also spent part of his time in writing and translating into Tagalog the famous French Declaration on the Rights of Man. Rizal wrote the constitution of La Liga Filipina with the assistance of Jose Maria Basa. The La Liga Filipina was an association of Filipinos for civic and social cause. So that ends our lesson. After what you have learned from this video, what issues or life difficulties did Rizal experience while studying in Europe which you have experienced in life or in studies? How were you able to solve the problems? You may comment down your thoughts after this video ends. Thank you for watching.